Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin. Today's video is another cave quilt, and I have a lot to say about it, so stay with me. So this cave facet quilt is the second in a series of two, and it all started with a fat quarter bundle that a friend, viewer, patron sent me, and I was blown away by not only her generosity, but by the beauty and vibrancy of the fat quarter bundle. And if you saw that first cave facet quilt, finish <laughs> that I called the purple cave because it had a lot of purple fabrics in it. Upon receiving the bundle, I stopped by the thrift store and found three shirts, maybe four, that matched fabrics in the bundle and was just like, oh my goodness, like it's meant to be. And got them home and kind of started pairing up fabrics together and realized that the shirts that I had found and the fabric that matched it, matched it, was in the cool family of colors. Uh, so purples, blue, the green family that was on the blue side, um, turquoise, just kind of all of that cool colors. So I used those cool colors along with some gray linen and shirts and made the first cave quilt. And what that left was all of these warm fabrics. And if you saw that video, I did a whole video on the fabric pull for the warm colors. And I stumbled on to, I think a viewer actually turned me on to Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise and decided that it was time to do flying geese. So I did the four at a time flying geese using warm K facet fabrics and shirts. And now I have the completed quilt here to show you. So let me spread it out so you can see it. So here it is in all of its warm K facet glory. <laughs> and I have to confess, this color palette is far more of a favorite for me personally than the cool colors. I love purples and blues, but where my heart is is really in reds and red orange and burgundy, and I kind of went through a pink phase last year. And so you can see that it's pretty evident. And so as I began, you know, I got my K facet fabrics together and started realizing, oh my goodness, I have shirts to match these two. And so I gathered my burgundy and pink, Pepto pink, and the perfect color lipstick shirt. Really all of these, even the oranges, are all shirts. So it was very, very similar to the Purple Cave quilts in that I was using shirts together with Cave Facet fabric. And then because I'm me and I like a challenge and I love working with shirts, and I'm a little bit crazy, I decided to challenge myself and see if I could use all shirt fabric for the background. And I like to do that because as I'm exploring new quilt patterns, some of them are great for using shirts and thrifted items and scraps. And some of them um, just don't really translate. They really do better with yardage. And this had a lot, you can see, a lot of white space in it. But I got the pattern. It's a free pattern, by the way. Uh, it's called the Flying Home Quilt. We'll have that link in the description box below. So I got the pattern, read the pattern, 
and realized that there was a good chance that I could use men's dress shirts for the background because of the size of the blocks. I'm not much of a cream colored fabric gal. I'm kind of a I'm kind of a white background gal. And so I dug through all my men's shirts and found all the white shirts and just as a backup because I had no idea how many I would use. I think I used three in total, by the way, maybe four. And I was able to get all these big pieces out of the backs of the shirts and some fronts and started putting it together and had so much fun making flying geese. I really thought when I started that flying geese were going to be hard to make. And I guess maybe if I did them one at a time, but I used the Leah Louise four at a time flying geese method and really just enjoyed it. Now, trimming is not a delight. Every time I would get out a new fabric, I would be like, oh, I love this one or, oh, this one is weird, but I think it'll work. <laughs> so the only hiccup really that I had, I had the oranges, I had the pinks, I had the burgundy and the Bordeaux, and I needed like one other solid shirt fabric. I went through my whole stash. I tried a lime green. I tried kind of an avocado green. I tried an uh, olive looking one. And in the end, I ended up with this brown mustard color. I thought to myself, this is this is going to stick out like a sore thumb. But I kind of just went with it. It's that same color is present in so many of the blocks. It's in this one next to it. It's in this one that's like uh, Jupiter. <laughs> There's a ribbon of this exact color in probably four or five of the blocks. And so I kind of just like, I'm going for it. Around that same time period, and while I'm in my pink phase, uh, another friend and viewer sent me a K-Facet jelly roll. And this jelly roll happened to have a lot of these same fabrics. And they were all in this color palette, all in the same color family. I just was like, oh my goodness. So first of all, how generous. Second of all, that's so cool. Third of all, oh my gosh, more K-Passive fabric. What am I going to do with that? So I got the all the pieces made, laid it out, did every iteration you can imagine, trying to figure out which ones went in the center and which ones went in the edge and how to orient them. And really, I tried to, like, the center piece has that kind of windmill, windmill feel. And so the ones that were directional, I tried to kind of turn them so that it it went the way it would naturally be. And then um, on these corner pieces, I oriented them a little more horizontally, just, I don't know, for the heck of it. Actually, yes, that is horizontal. For a second there, I was doubting whether it was vertical or, or horizontal because that's where I am in my life. So I got the thing, whole quilt top put together without the border. And it called for actually three borders, I think. I typically don't do borders on quilts. It's just, I don't know. I just, the quilts that I've been drawn to have not called for them. And I haven't needed to make whatever quilts I've chosen bigger by adding a border. And so I've had a couple, but not a lot. And so I got to this place and just got completely stymied. Just don't know what to do with the border. And the example in the quilt pattern, it had a darker background. And so it, it was, you know, just visually, it just looks so different. And I just couldn't get my head wrapped around it. So one day I just was going through all of the quilts that I still had things to do on. And I pulled it out. And I was like, I am going to figure this out. <laughs> I am going to make a decision. And so I laid it out on our bed 
kind of stared at it for a while. And I thought maybe orange. And then I was like, I was afraid it would end up looking like an orange and white quilt, which there's nothing wrong with an orange and white quilt, especially if you're a Tennessee fan or if you're a Texas fan, I'm neither of which. And then I thought, well, I could do red because I don't really have a true red anywhere in the quilt. It has references to red, but no true red. And then I thought it might be a little too stark, which is really kind of laughable because the whole thing is a little stark. But I just, I don't know, it just wasn't there. And then we throw it back to, I was kind of in a pink phase. And so I tried every pink fabric that I had in my stash. And it was either too dark, too bright. Most of them were too muted, actually, because I largely have shirt fabrics and they're not often as vibrant <laughs> as, and especially not in pink. And so I ordered some pink fabric from somebody. I think it's a Moda. I have a Moda, um, whatever that's called, like a color card, but it's in fabric, um, thanks to a viewer, Barbara, who sent me her offcut from it. And I just held the thing up to, <laughs> to the, like a, what about this pink? No, too, too purple. What about this pink? No, too red. And ended on this one that I think looks like bubble gum. And the few pictures that I've taken of it and put on... Instagram have really not done it justice. It's far pinker than it looks in the pictures that I've taken. And I got that far and then I'm like, oh gosh, what am I going to do for the binding? <laughs> so at that point I was like, oh ho, I have a whole jelly roll with these same fabrics in it. And so on the same day that I made the decision about the border, I thought, let me just go in and work out the backing and the binding as well. And then I can move it on up the line. And so I took all of the fabrics in the jelly roll that matched the ones in the quilt. And I literally just strung them together in order and then followed the same order so that there would just be interest all the way around the whole thing. Made the binding that same day. And then, of course, had the, oh, and now for backing. <laughs> Let me turn it over and show you what I chose. So I looked through all of my backings. And by backings, what I mean by that is sheets that I have bought from the thrift store for $1.99. <laughs> and I found this one, and it's, um, it's just a light tan I, I think I would call that maybe like French vanilla ice cream. I just said, like not five minutes ago, that I'm not a cream colored beige kind of girl. I like a white background. But I found this sheet and it is the softest sheet. It is so incredibly soft and smooth. 100% cotton. And I think this is one of those that was probably like a really nice sheet, like a 100% organic cotton, Egyptian something something, 1 million thread count. I don't know, but it was a really nice sheet. And it was for the thrift store and it was not expensive. And it was, I picked it up and went, oh. <laughs> Once I had gotten to that part where I realized, okay, I'm going to put a pink border on it and I'm going to use the jelly roll strips for the binding at that point, I realized I've made this quilt for myself. And I really didn't go into it with that plan. A lot of times I'll make a quilt just because I feel compelled to make it. And then somewhere in the process, I feel like it's revealed to me the true owner <laughs> of the quilt. It might be somebody that it's just the perfect color for them or someone who I've been thinking of that I know would love it. And I got this far and was like, I think this is my quilt. I think I just made myself a quilt. I laughed about the tan because I'm not really a tan kind of girl. I tend to be gray and white and stark contrast. But it was so soft and there's so much going on on the front, that it just seemed like the perfect backing. And it's just kind of 
yeah, it, it's just what I feel like was a needed calming plane against the fiery hot colors on the front. And especially knowing that the binding was going to set off on the back as well. It just seemed like the perfect backing. So I committed to it, got it all together, and then had the, oof, how is this going to be quilted? As I often do, at first I thought, well, I could, no. <laughs> I have said it, I will say it time and time again, I don't really enjoy the quilting. It's pretty big, and I don't actually know the overall size. So I apologize. It's like, 70 something by 70 something I think like 72 by 72 maybe I just didn't want to take it on so I texted my friend Sissy and said I've got a project for you if you want to start thinking about it she does custom quilting for uh herself and for friends and loved ones and has included me in that list of people, thankfully. And she quilts for the joy of quilting. She loves playing and with the quilting. She likes exploring new ideas in quilting. And she likes to really tailor her quilting to what is going on with the design of the quilt. So packed it up and sent it. And she had a terrible accident and fell and broke her finger, like darn near destroyed her finger and all the tendons in that hand and had a very painful and actually fairly long recovery. And she texted me, was like, oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe this. I've had an accident. I've had to have surgery on my hand. And she's like, I don't, you know, I'm not gonna be able to do your quilt for weeks and weeks. And I was like, it is not a rush. No one is sitting around, sitting around waiting on this quilt. It's for me. So you do it when you feel like it and when you're able and when you want to. So while she was recovering, because she's a retired teacher and loves learning just about as much as I do, if not more, she watched quilting videos. And so essentially... Her whole time that she was in PT and recovery from surgery, and then just all of the recovery time when she was unable to sew or quilt, she used in personal instruction and research. So I got the benefit of that, all of that online instruction that she wanted for herself. And so she would send me a link, look at this video from so-and-so and tell me what you think about how she handled those angles. Or <laughs> I really think that like bubbles and swirls would look great together, especially in the white space. And I'd be, I concur. That is great. Ooh, I love that video. How does she do all that? You know, that kind of thing. So we went back and forth and then she finally recovered and she's like, your quilt is going on the long arm today. We were both ecstatic. She confessed to me later that she was actually really intimidated because there is so much white space. So there's that central focal part of the flying geese coming together in what I call a windmill. And then there's all of this white space. And she wanted to honor the shape and style of the geese as geese. And then she wanted to honor all of the white space and we wanted something, we knew it needed something curvy and round. And so in the end, what she did with the quilting, it really is phenomenal quilting, truly. She outlined all of the elements of the design, of the piecing, and then did curved quilting within each geese kind of coming together to the point. And you can see that it is just lovely work. So it highlights the shape of almost like a real flying goose or a group of geese flying. We both liked the 
kind of the analogy of they are flying geese in the sky. In between each of the flying geese, she did a looped pattern that is different from the sky, but also different from the flying geese. It's like a nice transition between all of these swirls and bubbles or clouds, as it were, and the geese. She got the whole kind of kit and caboodle done and then got to the border. I was like, (laughs) which if you could see up close the work that she did, I mean, I would have been like, (laughs) after one one flying geese. Um, She did a lot of ruler work, just a lot of, you know, the whole swirls and then back into bubbles. And then, and she told me that one of her members of her, she has a quilt group that she's a part of. They said, how do you know when to do bubbles and when to do spirals? And she said, I do spirals until I get tired of doing spirals. And then I do bubbles for a while. And then when I'm tired of doing bubbles or pebbles, if you would prefer, when I get tired of doing bubbles, I go back to spirals. (laughs) So she got to the end and did a, it's almost like fingers or feathers kind of all along the edge with a little swirl. So the swirl comes in like it has migrated from the white shirts. And then all along the edge, there's just a varying length of fingers or feathers. I don't know what you'd call that. It's not really like piano keys, but it's kind of has that feel. And then because she is a hoot and a deer. She makes little the little catbird quilt logo with the bird that we have. She puts them, she quilts in catbird quilts or catbirds all throughout the quilt like Easter eggs. I think there are five of them. I think we found them all. Just to make it fun and personal and interesting. And we met up, we were about an hour and a half each way. So she comes an hour and some change and I go an hour and some change and we meet in the middle. And we actually met up at a Cracker Barrel. And when I got there, she beat me to it. She had gotten a table for probably 10 people for the two of us to have breakfast. And it's a good thing she did because I brought a huge bag of quilts to show her (laughs) quilts and quilt projects. She brought a huge bag of quilts and quilt projects. I took her some extra fabric. We had a blast. And all of the people around us at our table are like, did you make that? And I'm like, well, I did the piecing but she did all this gloriousness. You could just tell, like, people could not pay attention to their own food because they were too interested in what we were doing at this table with all these quilts. In fact, one of the tables had a lady who asked us about quilting, and her daughter had just started quilting. Side note, her very first quilt that she made was a trip around the world, which I was like, oh, okay, Go on with your bad self. But anyway, so we got together. We did the exchange. And of course, I just fawned, fawned over this quilt. Just oohed and odd. And still, like I could just start right now and talk about all the great things about it. And she oohed and odd over the piecing and the fabric colors and choices and how soft the back. She was like, where did you get that backing? It was, girl, it was a sheet from the thrift store. So we, you know, dish to dish about the quilt and had the best time. It was actually on my drive home from that meetup that I started noticing the changing leaves and the all the colors of green in the trees in the mountainous area that we were. And that was the start of the tangled quilt that I recently did. Got it back, got it all washed, and it has actually been on my bed since then. I fight between it and my linen quilt. Because if it's hot, I use the linen quilt. Sometimes I use them together. It is so happy and bright and warm. And warm, it's both. It's warm because it's a quilt, Um, but the warmth of all of these oranges and reds and pinks, I don't know, it's like simultaneously that kind of fiery punch with the orange in the middle 
and all these electric K facet fabrics. When I first saw, I thought, what am I going to do with that? And now I'm like, oh, they're so great. This one goes perfectly with this one, and this goes perfectly with this one. And to be able to do that marriage of K facet fabric and shirts, the background being shirts, but the border was Moda Bella solid. And then I used part of a jelly roll for the binding, but then a thrifted sheet on the back. It's such a great mix to me. And I guess it's just perfect that I ended up making a quilt for myself because it's like this is this is who I am right here in this quilt. Just such a mix of wild, vibrant, expressive, and I mean, I'm not a man's shirt, but... <laughs> but I am an extension of the thrift store. <laughs> so although this is my second K facet quilt, it will likely not be the last. People keep sending me K fa facet fabric and I can't walk away from a challenge. And now that I know that I can play with these fabrics and make them work for me in my own way, I say, bring it on. I'm Kathy Martin. This is the Catbird Quilts. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> <laughs>